Uh, now, I, I wonder if it's already happening where you work. It's a uh, it's a gathering storm, and it looks like it's going to happen. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the four day work week. It's a concept thrown around uh, in modern society, but it is gaining traction not only here in Australia, but you'd be amazed at the number of countries around the world seriously looking at four day work weeks. Hello, Dominican Republic. Yes, uh, Germany's now looking at it. Um, we know the French have taken a serious quiz at it. Brazil too. A new survey of over 1,400 Australian workers conducted by leading HR and payroll solutions provider ADP reveals that 30% of workers in Australia think a four-day work week will be the norm in their industry within the next five years. I'm very keen to know from you... One double three six nine three. Is that your own experience? But more importantly, I want to know with what we used to call blue collar jobs, the people who actually make things that help society function, is it going to be a thing um, amongst uh, uh, amongst the class of people who still actually help us uh, maintain a functioning civilization? Is it going to happen at the Werribee Surge Farm? Is it going to happen in the building industry? Plumbers, are you doing a four day work week? I want to know if it's uh, that concept has has made its way into those particular hands-on industries, if we want to call them that. Sue Elson is a career expert, and uh, is certainly across this, she knows whereof she speaks. Good afternoon, Sue. Hi, Tony. Sue, um, there's been a lot of talk about this, and I was really, as I said, quite surprised when I saw how widespread the consideration of it uh, is around the globe. What's your mm. what's your mail on that? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. Some people would be familiar with the idea of cramming your 40-hour week into four days, so that means four 10-hour days. But yep. the new method is actually involving you get 100% of the pay, you work four days a week, and in theory, your productivity improves. Now, there's been a lot of research conducted since 2022 by the four-day week global not-for-profit advisory group, including Mm. in Australia, and 26 of the organisations that were surveyed said 95% said they would move towards it because of the benefits of less less stress, less burnout, less fatigue, better mental health, better work-life balance, and I think if you think about like things like the rising cost of childcare, yeah. if there's two parents and you're both working four days, you could actually structure it so you only need three days of childcare. So, you know, there's, there's lots of other little perks that could come as a result of moving in this direction. But to your point about the people who do the, the regular jobs, I think the people who are most likely to potentially miss out are the self-employed yep. because... You know, we're, we're stuck working every day yeah. regardless. Yep. And, and also, uh, yeah, go on. Oh, well, uh, people who do contract work, um, yep. yeah, people who do uh, uh, short-term work, freelancers, that sort of thing, they don't have this option, do they? No, they don't. And it's definitely going to be in favour of large organisations, small businesses. If you imagine that you've got to be operational five or six days a week and if you cut a certain number of workers back to four days, mm. then you might have to eat extra cost of training somebody else to to cover those days. But then on the other hand, if your employees come in and they're more productive and they work better and there's less absenteeism, you're going to pick up on the other side of the scale there. Uh, Okay. You've mentioned burnout. Uh, Four consecutive days of 10 hours. Does that not lead to burnout? Well, that would be the old model. This new model is talking about you actually only work the four days, but you're still expected to do the five days worth of work in that time. Oh, so, okay. So it's a productivity know, you, trade-off, is it? Correct, correct. So you are expected to improve your productivity. Now, we all know we could all get an extra two hours in our day if we just stop looking at our phones. Mm. <laughs> so maybe yeah. that could improve productivity to get the phone out of the way. Uh, but yes, and, and there's a lot of organisations that have already done it. Um, Kath Blackham from the Versa Group, she's you know implemented it. She's a raving fan of it. And I was at a webinar yesterday. You know, The other issue that employers are having is they can't keep people anymore. 
before because everybody's expecting that flexibility now. And interestingly, if you've worked for an employer for 12 months, you actually, under the Fair Work Act, you have the right to ask for flexibility. So in theory, you could actually ask for those four days. One double three six nine three one double three six nine three. Should Australia implement a four-day working week? Would it work for you? Would it not work for you? I really want to hear from uh, people who run and own small businesses because they are the engine of the economy. They're Australia's largest uh, employer. So uh, you would have thought that um, this sort of thing would be more tailored to them, but it, it's not exactly a level playing field, is it, Sue? Because um, no. the big companies have a disproportionate amount of power and influence when it comes to uh, shaping workplace relations. Well, they have a lot more systems and processes in place that they can tweak. So, for instance, they could just create a policy where there's no meeting Mondays and that Ah. kind of thing. And so that means that on the no meeting Monday, you get all your work done. Now, there's another implication of even the work from home debate, which is... Yeah, they're getting people to come into the office and they're working on the basis of the fear of missing out. So they make it a fabulous experience to come into the office and you get them there. But then those people who are accustomed to working from home end up having to go home and then doing the work that they would have done (laughs) if they weren't in the office. You know, so there's actually some people, even though they're working from home, if they're coming into the office, they're getting that double layer of work too. So there's You know, we really are in a time of significant transition and fluctuation, and I think it's going to be a bumpy road for a while yet. Okay. So is it uh, the sort of thing that it's going to favour what we call the laptop class, and we we saw them almost sail through COVID when Mm. other parts of the economy, people who work with their hands, as I was saying, were were Mm. deprived of the ability to go to work? Um, is it yep. is it more going is it going to uh, favour them rather than other sectors of the economy? No, I actually think it's going to favour the people who do have to show up for work. Ah. So if we think about the 1800s, we were working 14 hours a day, six days a week. Yep. It's now more than 75 years since we moved to a five-day work week. Now, you imagine someone on a shift roster, if they're only required to work four days out of seven instead of five, then they're going to get some of the benefits that some of those perhaps work-from-home people have been getting up until now. So I actually see it being a fairer way going forward. So, Elson, career expert, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, What a superstar, Sue Elson. Um, I'm keen to get your thoughts on this, One double three six nine three.